Hey guys, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to drop an item into a list box or a file or multiple files and how to um, process them. So if we put a breakpoint here, um, drop inside list box. And if we run the application in debug mode, now if you can find two CSV files, you can just create them with a one with a space and one without a space. And we're gonna highlight both of those and we're gonna drop them into the list box. Then we're going to go to our application and see the breakpoint. So if you click on the event um, object and then go to data, as you can see, what tick into DD does is it puts all those files into one single string. And the file with a space with a space has a curly brace. So we need to be able to um, pass this type of string. So we need to be able to remove the curly braces and also put these two um, file paths into separate um, into separate items on the list box. Okay, so how we do that is if we stop, we need to pass it. Okay, so actually, let me just run this again and get that reference. Okay, so we're gonna drop it in there, go to event again, and we're just gonna go to data. So we're just gonna copy this value then we're going to stop. And then we're going to paste the value here. This, this will basically be our file name parameter. So now this is the type of um, stuff you'll do on leak code. Um, so the code may look a bit messy, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to pass it and separate it out. Okay. So what we're going to have here is we're going to have the size of the file name. So then, so we're going to go through all these characters. So len file name, the result is basically going to be a list of strings. So it's going to be a list of the file paths. So res is equal to list of file paths. Okay. And name is going to be blank. And the index is going to be equal to zero. So we're going to start here. And then we're going to go through each character in this long string. Okay. So now the method we're going to type is while the index is less than the size if file name index is equal to this character, the opening curly brace, then that means we're inside a string that contains spaces. So what we need to do is uh, we're going to create another variable called j, which is going to be equal to index plus one, and then we're going to keep iterating over. So while file name j does not equal the close brace name plus equal file name j, and then j plus equals one. And then when that's done, so when we hit the close brace, we're going to append the name and we're going to set the name equal to blank. And we're going to set the index equal to J. So now I know it's a bit, uh, a bit of a, like a lot of codes, but basically what this is saying is when we reach open embrace, we're going to create a variable called J and we're going to increase the, the J is going to basically be the index plus one. So for example, J is going to start here. And then while J does not equal the close brace, we're going to append the name with all the characters that we see. So name is going to be plus the colon, plus the slash, plus the U, all of this up until we reach the curve space in which it will exit this. So we'll exit um, this block of code once we reach the close space, and then it'll append the name, which will be the file path that we have. And then it will set the name equal to zero, and then the index will now equal J. So that our starting point will now be here. Okay, and then we just got a few more things to do. Else if file name index equals space and the name does not equal blank, then res.append name and name equals blank. I'm going to explain this in as well in a second. Else if file name 
index does not equal space, then we're just going to record it. So name plus equal file name index. Then after all of this, no matter which um, block of code we enter, we're always going to increase the index by one. Okay. And then finally, once that's done, once we're out of this while loop, if the name does not equal blank, so if the name does um, contain something, we're going to append the name to the results. And then we're going to return the result. Okay, append. Okay, so um, what this is saying is, if the name does not equal space, I'm sorry, if the index value equals a space and the name is not blank, then that basically means that um, we're at the end of um, that file path and we need to append the name. So uh, just to give an example, and uh, let's say let's say there was no squ um, squarely braces here. So if we reach the end of the um, file path, so we reached, so we've recorded all of this, and then we reach a space, the name is going to be equal to uh, this file path, sorry, so this file path. And that means we should record the name because that means we passed over a, um, a file path. Okay, so when that's done, we, re we record it. Otherwise, if the index does not equal space, then we just record it. So anytime it doesn't equal space, we're just going to record what's in there. Okay, and we keep increasing the index by one. And then lastly, say like if we reach the end of a file, like here, um, we just need to check that name is not empty. And if name is not empty, that means we as a file we haven't included, and then we're just going to append that. And then, yeah, we return the results, which is a list of all the file paths. So you can look over that in more depth, but that's how you would pass it. Um, it's just that the spaces make it a bit more tricky. So you can't do something like um, string.split where all the spaces take place because if you have multiple files, um, it's going to split those um, file paths apart. So yeah, it's a bit of a, a little bit of a complex one. So that's why we run this method. Okay. And then next we're going to do the drop inside list box event. Okay. So we need something called a map. So we're going to do uh, self dot path underscore map is equal to an empty dictionary. Okay, and what we're going to do here, so file underscore paths is equal to self dot underscore pass drop files and events dot data. Because as we saw earlier with our breakpoint, event dot data is the list of file or the string of the file path or file paths. Okay. So we're going to be able to pass that. So this is going to return basically a list of those um, file paths. Then what we're going to do is current underscore list box underscore items is equal to set self dot file names list box dot get the first to the last. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to turn the current items in the list box into a set. And the reason why we do that is because we don't want the user to put the same um, file into the list box twice. And the set is because it's O of one lookup, so it's a lot faster. Okay, then what we're going to do is for file underscore path in file underscore paths, if file underscore path dot ends with dot CSV, we're going to do the following. So we're only going to accept CSV files. So path underscore object equals path. So that path library, um, we inherited, we imported a class called path. And basically, we're going to put a wrapper around the um, file path. So file underscore path. And file underscore name is basically going to be equal to path underscore object dot name. So what this is going to do is this path is going to turn this file path into an object. And then from that object, we can just get the name, which will just return us the actual name of the file, which will be random stock tickers.csv, for example, rather than the whole path. And I use pathlib just because it's quicker. OK, 
Okay. Then if L underscore name is not in the current underscore list box items, then what we're going to do is self dot file names list box dot insert. So we're going to insert at the bottom of the list box the file underscore name. Then inside the path map, and the path map's use is going to be shown in the next video, the file name is going to be equal to the file path. The reason why we need this is because the list box is going to have the file names. And file underscore name. The list box is going to have the file name. And we need the file path to um, convert that path into a CSV um, to display for our data table. So that's why we need path map. So if I run this, if we run this, and now if we attempt to drop a file in, well, our files in, we should read both those files. So that's perfect. Okay, so the next video, we're going to look into displaying um, the CSVs in those list boxes. Okay, so stay tuned.